folks, uh, Paul Smith scooting fool out here on the Conestoga River today. I came here in my car rather than on my scooter, but it's a little rainy and I needed to carry my uh, hunting stuff too. So there's too much stuff. Today is the opener of uh, dove season, so I'm out and about doing stuff. Uh, just sharing some of my some of my fun here. Wow, I am catching gigantic sunfish out of the Conestoga. Today. Look at the size of my hand. Look at the size of that pumpkin seed. He's gigantic. They'd actually be good on a good on a plate. Oh, I'm going to throw them back anyway, but still, this is pretty awesome. Just out here on the Conestoga, you see my little cricket lure. I don't know what brand it is. Something from Cabela's. Anyway, Uncle Bucks, I think. Um, I've already been out here for a little bit. Caught a few fish. They're all pumpkin seeds, and that's okay. You know, when you're fishing, a lot of people, they get all about the big bass and all that. And that's that's wonderful for what it is. But I just like being out by the water. Um, I do see a big bass down in there. Um, probably can't see him, but I'm thinking that. Looks like the snout of one, he's just kind of sitting there. I see fins moving, keeping himself steady in the current. Um, I'm going to cast out a few more times, see what I get. Unfortunately, because i got to use two hands, can't show you the process of pulling things in. But anyway, you can see that on any other fishing show. Now, this is a spot that's long been my favorite fishing hole on the Conestoga. I won't tell you where it is, although if you really try to figure it out, you probably can. But I've come here a lot. Huh, looks like a lot of stuff here. I've got to watch I don't trip. One of the things that I've found, <laughs> there goes, there goes me. <laughs> One of the things that I've found as I've gotten older here is my ability to manage on the rocky terrain and such is not the same as it used to be. And uh, I find myself falling down a lot more than I used to. Well, almost falling. Uh, I used to be able to go up and down these banks and stuff, and not a problem. Now I just gotta watch my step and... Growing old kind of stinks, but it is what it is. So, I often find smallmouth in these little pockets here. So I'm gonna see what I get. I've um, got a panfish magnet on there now. Probably going to switch to something else and see what happens. I get myself out here into the... Uh, under the bridge here. going to give it a try with a couple of my uh, little poppers. And yet another pumpkin seed caught on a... I'm pretty sure this is pumpkin seed just because of the, the yellow belly there. Um, caught on my little... my favorite little... Rapala. Um, this is this is fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna get this guy off the. Actually, no, that's not a sun, that's not a pumpkin seed at all. That was like green sunfish. Just look at his face. Okay, well, now the, I had been catching some pumpkin, pumpkin seeds up above, so um, that's really cool. So I'm out with my uh, little bang stick here, out for some dove hunting. Uh, Looks like I may have found the dove fields. This is land that's supposed to be managed specifically for dove hunting. So far, I found it's not nearly as good as what it was supposed to be. I'll find out. Looks like they did cut it some. Okay, I took a wrong turn, looks like. I'm um, supposed to continue down this path just a little ways longer. Wearing my hunting boots. And uh, a little uncomfortable because I haven't ridden, worn them in a while. But I um, used to wear them as my motorcycle boots. But yeah, anyway. thing with dove hunting is you've really got to keep your eyes up. And I haven't seen anything much yet. I saw one dove. Um, there's other hunters out here, unfortunately, so kind of leads to uh, pressure. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you know, I don't hunt because I want to kill things. I hunt because I want to be out here. A lot of hunters don't. It's just because, you know, put a little bit extra food on the table, food they wouldn't normally get. You can't get this kind of meat at a grocery store. And there's just the whole connection with the uh, visceral nature of the human 
uh, existence, uh, the hunter-gatherer thing. Fine if you're an agrarian and you garden, but when you're out doing this kind of thing, you're out in the, in the wild, well, somewhat wild, <laughs> It makes it, it makes it life, it, life is, uh, it, it shows you how precious life is and allows you to connect with nature in a way that you don't connect when you just go to the grocery store and buy stuff. When you just buy it at the grocery store, well, had a conversation with a guy, a great guy, a nice guy, and I said to him, he said, I was, I was squashing a lot of lantern fly, which are pests around here. And when I went to the squash, he's like, well, don't kill it. I'm like, um, it's a pest. It needs to be killed. I'm like, no, well, I, oh, I don't kill anything. I'm like, well, what do you eat? Oh, I eat meat. I just don't want to kill it myself. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever. All right, so this looks like the small field down this end a ways. Um, just need to find a way to set myself up. Looks like they have worked on a little bit. You know, they got a plow field here. Um, so that stones are at the top, so that the uh, doves can get stones for their gizzard. Um, I'm going to set up in those trees over yonder and see what happens. So, so I see what they've done with this. And there's a, there's a group down there, you can't really see them from this angle. But there's a group down there that have set up a decoy stand um, on the edge. But I don't know if you're technically supposed to set up on the path around the edge, but whatever. Um, the way this is set up is there's a string of plowed fields here. And all those little rocks uh, that are on the top of things, those are for the dove to use for their gullet to, uh, for their gizzard to um, make it so they can digest seeds and such. But yeah, I can't even see the... Uh, a whirring dove from this angle. Oh no, I can barely, you can barely see some action, some motion down there. Anyway, there's a group set up there. But this path goes all the way around the huntable land, and I see what they did here. And it's not a bad idea. Um, it really is conducive to people who hunt like me. I, I go for a walk with my gun. I don't hunt in such a way that I'm Kneel down to a single place. It's going to be interesting when I get to the point where I'm not able to walk for a while because of my neck. But when I hunt, I just go for a walk. I don't generally shoot anything when I go hunting. My whole idea is if I draw a bead on something, I count it as a kill or I leave it as that. Mainly because I don't want to clean it. I go through a lot of work for that. Um, so I, I, I hunt. I paid my hunting license so I can come out and do this. And yeah, I'm carrying a old Remington 870 Wingmaster. Um, but the likelihood of I'm actually going to shoot at anything is very small. The main reason being, it's just a pain to clean them once you got them. Same when, when I go deer hunting, I've shot one deer. And I was kind of happy with the way it worked out because somebody else shot him too he got up from however he got up i don't know but hit him with a 12 gauge right behind the ribs right, right in the ribs rather right behind the uh shoulder blade and he went down but then he got up again and went running a little bit further got knocked down by another hunter and that's fine i helped him drag it out of the woods and i didn't have to worry about cleaning it or figuring out what to do with the meat so, my wife don't eat uh, the venison, so yeah, much venison. Although, to be honest, if you're a hunter and you have venison, people will say, oh, do you have any extra? So, there's usually not much trouble getting rid of it, but they don't generally pay you the, the butchering fees. And to get a deer butchered is almost $200 at this, at this point, depending where you go. 100 to 200 so um, some butchers will do it for uh, choice cuts or whatever oh I know some people they just give the deer to a charity and the charity takes care of it and uh, gives the meat to the poor that always works out as well so hunters do a lot for 
people in poverty. Think about it. Um, kind of cool there. That one group back there, they're teaching their dog uh, how to retrieve. That's kind of cool. He barked at me though. He was like, oh, a stranger, a stranger. Stranger danger. But anyway, I'm gonna cut this through this field and get back to my car. My arm is starting to hurt. Uh, can't wait to get this pinched nerve fixed. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Hope you had, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I enjoyed going out and taking a walk. After I got home, I went to the range. I think I freaked out one of the neighbor kids because I was walking out to the car with a bunch of firearms. Anyway, um, the uh, went to the range, shot my uh, shot my shotguns to see how the slugs went. It's been a while since I've shot slugs. Found out that I really need to adjust the sights on my 12 gauge <laughs> and I remembered how much it hurt to shoot the thing I got a little bit of a I think I got a bruise a little bit anyway um it was good just to go and I ran into another guy at the range shooting his uh, nine mil and I shot my 380 and um it was good it was just a great day just to relax and enjoy myself so with everything crazy going on in the world be safe be well and be blessed I I hope all is well with you folks, and uh, thanks so much for watching.